Live from Boston, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering Red Hat Summit 2015. Brought to you by Red Hat. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Boston, everybody. This is theCUBE, we're here live at Red Hat Summit. SiliconANGLE Wikibon, we go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise, we get the great guest on, Dietmar Fauser, Vice President of Architecture and Quality and Governance at Amadeus. Dietmar, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. Hello. So tell us a little bit about Amadeus for those in our audience that aren't familiar with the project and the organization. So Amadeus, we are a company providing IT solutions to the travel industry, so we are one, one of the biggest player in, in, in this industry. Traditionally, Amadeus is what we call a, a distribution system, so we, we link what we call providers and subscribers, so travel agencies, online travel agencies, uh, TMCs, so travel management companies like Amex, with the providers that are essentially airlines, hotel chains, uh, car rental companies, cruise lines, uh, whoever has a product to sell. So it's really a kind of a, an electronic marketplace that matches the, the demand and the offering uh, uh, in the industry. And it was it was born out of a pan-EU effort, right? Is that correct? Yeah, Amadeus it's has. So, yeah. It's, it's sort of born on the internet, uh, uh, just a little kind bit before, but then pivoted to the internet, right? Kind of, so Amadeus has been, has been created by uh, three big European uh, airlines as a European project. That's, that's why we are structured across Europe, so headquartered in Spain, development essentially in, in France, and the, the operational center is nearby Munich in Erdinger. Uh, so there was a political intention to do this. Uh, so it, it was one of the big uh, kind of electronic marketplaces w way before the internet existed. Huh? So we offered uh, at, the, at the time being these green screens, uh, right, right, term right. terminal access, but at a very large scale. Uh, so. Uh, Amadeus had uh, quite quickly 350,000 uh, uh, terminals connected to it, and then in, in in the late 90s came the internet and a big explosion, of course. Of so uh, kind of a, a saber competitor, is oh, that absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. well, okay, we are, the, we are the, 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 the other player. Yeah, you, so. right, the two big whales in the business. And then of course, absolutely. all kinds of you know disruption going on in that business that you have to respond to, mm. which kind of leads me to, all right, so, you have all these competitors trying to come at you with you know, using disruptive technologies. How have you responded? You've got a development center in the south of France. I'm sure DevOps is fundamental to your culture. You're here at Red Hat Summit, open source. You know, we're talking PaaS all week. Talk about the culture, your development culture. Okay, so we are, I would say, a pretty aggra aggressive adopter of new technology. So we, we were grounded as, uh, founded as a mainframe shop uh, running on IBM, uh, TPF technology. Uh, late in the 90s, we we switched to open systems uh, like uh, Unix and then Linux systems, so highly distributed systems. Uh, well before uh, time kind of open source middleware solutions were available, and now we see the next step of technology changes coming in, like like big big cloud management solutions, uh, hybrid. Uh, uh, clouds and distributed environments, and we, we want to ensure that Amadeus is ready to, to take these opportunities should our clients ask us uh, for this, and of course bring it into our own data center, because we expect a lot of uh, advantages in terms of uh, automation and less less human intervention, so less error-prone operations. So, so yeah, you've, so you've seen quite the evolution, I say, <coughs> from TPF to what used to be called open systems, uh, was the sort of Unix era. Um, and, and so, now you've got uh, a culture of, of DevOps emerging in you know the the world. Where are you guys in that whole journey, with re regard to sort of that DevOps culture? So I, I think like like most significant or, or almost all companies, I think in the IT field, we look at, at this very actively. So we have a a traditional split of uh, development and operations. Uh, so. Currently there is a kind of a handover from uh, R&D to operations when we ship uh, releases or new products. Uh, and we, we clearly believe that we, we should overcome this uh, and tie the organizations more together. So in, in recent projects we implemented DevOps teams, so joint teams uh, with people coming from both uh, operations and R&D organizations. And we see a clear benefits of doing this. And there is a better flow of information uh, and I think the tendency is like across the whole industry is to go much more in 
in this uh, in this direction. So now. let's paint a picture of your organization. So you got existing applications that have been around for a while. You got sort of new apps that I'm sure you're writing for 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 the web, and then you got others that maybe you might want to move to the cloud from you know on on premises. But so you still have mainframe. Apps. We still have a little bit of mainframe around. So the the firm sunset date is end of next year, so end of 2016. And off the mainframe. Uh, off, off goes. So we track this on an almost daily basis. The CPU usage uh, going down according to to expectation. A very long and complex uh, project. It took us years and years to to get this. Uh, and and now it's coming the next step, uh, the the containerization and and making applications ready for. For cloud operations, whether it's it's in our own data center or perhaps in the future in in, in other hosting environments, it's a far less disruptive uh, step for us because our applications are reasonably modern and sticking them into a container and having them scheduled uh, over over a container management system like OpenShift uh, with Kubernetes uh, is, is not such a disruptive move for us. And and so your uh, your primary sort of infrastructure is what Linux, and obviously, and. Some Windows or yeah, right, like we, everybody else. Uh, so essentially, Linux uh, from a pure capacity point of view, it's way way beyond eighty percent. Uh, surely in the ninety percent, <coughs> it's running on Linux. Uh, our e-commerce uh, environment uh, is running on Microsoft uh, Java, and we have in mind uh, over time to move this onto a Linux uh, uh, standard computing environment, the same that we currently work on. But we know that this will take some some time and effort. Uh, but the good thing is with containers, you don't care so much whether there is Java running inside or, or, or Python or C++, like most of our applications, or, or whatever actually. Yeah, so. Yeah, so, so Dietmar, it's pretty early in the whole Docker discussion. Can, mm -hmm. can you help explain to your peers you know, what led you to the, down the containerization path and, and what you've benefited from it? Oh, yeah, sure, I mean, Docker is, I think, I believe, the fastest adoption that we have seen in the whole industry uh, uh, ever, so, Many of our teams naturally uh, look towards uh, towards new technologies. We have very very high high flying and curious engineers, and so there is a natural adoption. So the, the benefits we expect from uh, from Docker is a standard operating uh, model, like uh, scheduling uh, standard containers, uh, no matter what they are doing uh, over over the infrastructure. Having a more traceable deployment uh, chain uh, because uh, the, the good thing with uh, the containers is that you are entirely sure that the the same thing it's it's signed and trusted uh, uh, containers, the same thing runs uh, on on test systems and on production, so so there is a software engineering uh, advantage and there is a, a runtime operational advantage to have uh, standard containers. Okay, so really kind of the lifecycle management of your applications. Yeah, li lifecycle management and operations uh, both both are equally important. I think from a from an agility point of view, lifecycle uh, advantages are important. From an operational point of view, it's important that the, the system is uniformly run, so that there are no no kind of idiosyncrasies uh, depending on the technology you use, because this this ultimately leads to to error-prone procedures or, or erratic behavior when there are issues, because. People have to see. Okay, this is the e-commerce environment. I have to behave differently than in okay. in the open system. So you, you, your your team has a lot of Linux background. Did that help <laughs> with the adoption of, of, of what you of, oh. of the containers? Oh yes, uh, we we have a very strong uh, Linux culture. It it became pretty evident quickly that uh, container would be something that flies. Uh, it's it's from a software point of view. It's very close to what we do with software anyway, because containers are layered. You have a version on it, and you build a container almost like you build a software release. So, it's from an IT point of view quite a natural adoption. And I would say our strong Linux culture helped us more on the on the OpenShift Kubernetes adoption than on the Docker adoption itself. Okay. We dig deeper into into the details when we talk about the OpenShift platform really. Mm. So you've also got you know, governance and you know, some people are concerned about security when they talk about containers. How did you sell this you know, up to your management chain and you know, any kind of challenges or lessons learned uh, that, that you could share along those lines? Well, we, we systematically look into security. So we, we don't believe that, that containers would add a significant risk. Uh, I mean, the, the whole thing is that you have, you have to have a trusted source of from where containers are running. So we, we have a, uh, what we call a DML a media library. Uh, it's a thing where containers get stored, where the, the runtime systems pick it up and run it. So what we have to be sure that 
only trust that development teams can commit a container into this environment. So we will not run containers coming from Docker Hub right on our production system, of, of course not. So we don't intend to open Amadeus as a standard a pass where everybody can run its stuff, of course. No? So, so maybe talk a little bit more about the Amadeus cloud. Um, the platform, uh, what's, the, what's the objective? Mm. How do you, you know, are you building an ecosystem around that? Maybe talk about that a little bit. So, so the, the principal objective is simplification and automation of our, of our operational environment. Huh? So, as I said, we, we have, we have uh, Microsoft environments, we have Linux environments, and the Linux environment is very big, so there are little deviations here and there. So, what we call the, 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 the Samadios Cloud services is really rolling a standard scheduling and, uh, and operation management system into, into our own data center. Our kind of definition for what a, what a cloud system really is, uh, because I believe there are many of them out there, is that we, with these systems we, we stretch the, the, the resource management to the size of a data center, which means you, you have global resources available and you, you let a computer system choose which resource uh, to use for a given task. And currently, we are we, we do this uh, in a very stringent, but, but much more uh, I, I won't say old-fashioned, but more classical way by, by saying, okay, these machines are attached to this application. It's not fully automated at this it's, point. It, or, or it's, it's not fully automated. It's very much automated, but it's but uh, it could be. But it, you've chosen oh, choosing oh. not to. The machine's not making the decision <coughs> as to where to place the workload, is that right? Well, or? Voila, the, the difference is that currently machines kind of are, are fixed, in a fixed way assigned to, uh, to applications. So a, a machine is named according to the application it will run on, and on, on big cloud systems this doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah. You, you just see a machine as an anon anonymous piece of, uh, it's invisible. of capacity, and it's invisible, and it should not be up to a human to choose which is the right, right piece of capacity to run a given task at a given moment. It's, it's, if, you, if you think this through, that's exactly what Linux is doing. I mean, you have cores, you have memory available, and you have many processes running on the operating system, and the operating system chooses to which task give, give a given uh, core or a given CPU, which, uh, which memory consumptions you get, how much access to, to uh, computing resources you get. And what we see with uh, Kubernetes and these environments of OpenShift is that this model gets stretched to clusters of machines, like tens of thousands of machines in some extreme cases. So we, we, we kind of move the scheduling paradigm up to the, the whole data center. The data center is the computer, that's what we try to teach internally. Uh, so mm -hmm. and there, is, there is a way to go, of course, to, uh, to implement this. It, uh, right, yeah. but it's the vision. That it's the vision. The is this, yeah, How absolutely. about your database technology? What's, I mean, a variety of different databases I can imagine? Yeah, yeah, like primarily in, in Oracle li shop like, or? uh, like in, in big environments like us. Primarily, uh, primarily Oracle, we, as I said, we adopt technology fast and, and, and early, so. We are very, very huge NoSQL shop. Huh? Even with an Oracle, we use you know, key value data, so data it's models. Oracle's uh, key, key value store. Well, it's, uh, it's, we have built this uh, our own. It's, it's very simple to implement a yeah. key value store on Oracle. You have a table with two, right. with two columns. One is the key, the other <laughs> right. is, is just a, a binary object. Yep. And, and you but you use that you platform to... We, we, we did use this this way because NoSQL solutions didn't exist uh, back in 2000. And, yeah. and now we use other technologies, like many of us. We, we use um, MongoDB, we use Couchbase, uh, so Memcached a lot. Uh, so if Oracle comes to you and says, Dietmar, hey, we got this great new PaaS announcement, new cloud, you don't have to go anywhere else, Red Stack, extend Oracle into the application domain. Forget that Red Hat stuff. Mm. You know, that's just fragile. Mm. Right? What's your response? I, I, I would be. Would you <coughs> throw them out? Would you? <laughs> no, 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 no. But uh, yeah. I, I would surely argue a lot with them. I mean, we have a lot of trust in, in what we are doing with Red Hat. Uh, it's it's not a tiny startup that that comes along. They have proven that they can bring uh, uh, enterprise uh, ready uh, uh, things uh, to the market, like Linux. Uh, I mean, that's, uh, everybody is using uh, their Linux uh, distribution. So so do we. We are a strong believer in open source, so th this is one of the key arguments. Uh, the, the fact that uh, we profit and we we contribute to something that is of common use. The infrastructure is not something that brings us a competitive advantage. Really, it's our applications, our our 
technical and functional know-how to build solutions for the IT and for the travel industry. So we quite like the idea that we share our collective intelligence to build the 90% of the computing stack that is not the application that everybody needs at a reasonable cost uh, and to high quality. Huh? So, uh, let me play, I hate being in the position of playing <coughs> playing Oracle, but you, you said I would debate them, let's no, say, no right? Worries, yeah. So, okay, so they're going to come in and say, the advantage, so I hear a lot about integration. The advantage they're going to say that we have is this full stack integration from silicon all the way up through the application, and that's going to give you better performance, better reliability, better recovery, um, better everything, better mm. scale, blah, blah, blah. The open source can't match that, is what they're going to say. Mm. I'm, I'm hearing, you don't buy that. Uh, Why don't you buy no, that? No, I don't, for a couple of reasons. First, the biggest cloud environments are built on, on open technology. So Google Compute Engine, AWS, there is a lot of uh, open, open source technology in there. Secondly, there are indications that uh, in the future some of our clients might ask us to run the solutions not in our data center but closer to a given booking source, for example. Uh, so there, like, like a lot of other companies, Th th there might be a need to distribute the computing and not to master the infrastructure over which you you run it ultimately. It could be any any provider, a client of us or whomever. And it, it's it's really important to 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 decouple the applications from the underlying infrastructure. And this is this is why we why we build our applications around the OpenShift platform that can run over a variety of infrastructure as a service, so OpenStack or VMware or whatever solutions we, we choose, or bare metal. Huh? So it's, it's important to decouple the applications from the infrastructure to give you more flexibility, freedom, choice, yes. speed. Yeah, uh, not necessarily speed, I would say, but, but choice, huh? freedom to operate, so, so yeah, to speak, yeah. you, you see. So, so that's, that's a key point. So, uh, uh, so the examples you used. Ima imagine for, for, a given, for one second you are with Oracle and you, you face the need to run something on Google uh, Compute Engine, uh, yeah, you would have a, it's possible, of course, but it would not be the most. It's all Java. I'm teasing. It's not all Java. I'm teasing, that's what Larry Ellison would say, it all, it's all written Java. I'm, I'm pushing because I'm trying to understand, that's mm. the only reason, because what you talked about, Google Compute Engine, Amazon, et cetera, those are, they're built on open source, but they're highly homogeneous environments. Mm and Oracle's coming at you with a highly homogeneous environment. My question is, are you able to replicate, or do you even need to replicate that homogeneity in order to replicate the capabilities of, let's say, that those public cloud providers? As I said, homogeneity, especially for the infrastructure part, might be not, not the right parameter anyway to take into account. I mean, there, there is a given set of heterogeneity. Once you say you want to make a platform ready, to run the, to run it on different uh, infrastructures, homogeneity uh, is is a bit gone. Huh? Yeah, uh, that's okay. great. So, D Dave, I got a, I got a question from the the crowd actually, yeah. Dietmar. They said, I mean, you you guys are moving pretty fast, and the the question they have is your customers, the people that run on your platform, you know, have their their operations, you know, on Amadeus, you know. A, Bring us inside that that communication because we, we got to expect that there's times that they actually aren't ready for it or holding back or you know how do you bring them along how does that uh, you know give and take of customers that are ready to move fast and those that move a little slower? Well, th there are two aspects uh, of the answer to this. First, I, I believe uh, historically our customers have a lot of trust in what we are doing. I mean, we we operate for them especially for the airlines. We are a very big provider of airline IT systems, so we operate uh, flight inventories, uh, uh, airport operations for the airlines, and our customers are used by the, the SaaS models of as a service to, to outsource this, this type of stuff to us, and they acknowledge that we moved from mainframes to, to Unix, uh, and they will also acknowledge that we moved to, towards uh, uh, cloud-based systems. Th there is another thing, we don't explore this actively, but a lot of our customers uh, are in discussions with us to have other third-party companies extend our own capabilities, like serviceability of our own solutions, uh, and the more you, you move towards standard containerization, the easier it would be in the future 
to, to take third-party software to extend our own core capabilities on our platform, should we decide to do this? As I said, we, we don't intend to position Amadeus as a pass uh, to do this, but uh, it's something we, we keep in mind, and this is also why we believe that containerization and standard scheduling is, is so important. So every vendor has an open source strategy, and I'll put that in quotes. Oracle does, VMware, Obviously, Red Hat lives, breathes, eats open source. Certainly Even IBM. Microsoft. Certainly IBM, Microsoft. Microsoft is opening, yeah. You know, mm -hmm. definitely opening up. As a buyer, how do you evaluate, well first of all, I, I'm, I'm making the assumption that open source is very important to you. Mm -hmm. So that's a key criterion for your vendors to have. How do you evaluate, because they all come at you with marketing, oh yes, we do OpenStack, and we love Kubernetes, and Docker, and blah, blah, blah. How do you evaluate the validity validate mm. their story? That, that's a good question, really, uh, uh, because I think there is no single scientific answer uh, answer to this, so it, it's it's really a mix of of trust that we have in a, in a, in a given company, the, in some situations, the funding a company has, if it's a small smaller company, not like Red Hat, uh, the, the adoption of the industry, so Kubernetes, for example, I mean, there's Google Google behind uh, Red Hat, uh, quite a bunch of other big, important companies, so it's it, it looks like something that will be around uh, for a significant time. And for, for sure, the fact that it's fully open sourced is very important because it gives us the freedom to, to put our fingers in and if, if need be, maintain it ourselves. We don't want to do this, but the possibility is there. Mm. And it, there is an aspect of, of forward thinking, so the moderni modernity of, of the solution. So it's, it's a mix of given, of given parameters. But we, we work with a lot of the companies you're, you were setting. We are a significant customer of VMware, so we talk to them also. And we have had extensive uh, discussions with them around Cloud Foundry. We use their OpenStack uh, implementation, for example. So it's it, it's a mix. We we try not to put all of our eggs in the same basket either. Yeah, so. and, mm. and many of those stories are compelling. I mean, these are smart people. They listen oh, to yeah, the, yeah, to yeah, their yeah. customers. They know that if they don't listen to their customers, they're going to end up like Digital or Sun or uh, absolutely. you know Data uh, General. Absolutely, they're, they're great companies, intelligent yeah. people, and they they see the threat of uh, of open source uh, solutions coming around and they adapt to this of course uh, but at uh, the same time they know that if they adopt publicly kubernetes and docker and things like that that they can freeze the market on the upstarts mm. and they can maybe take their time uh, is that changing though as the are the market pressures so great that that companies like vmware certainly ibm has adopted its versions of, of open source and does you know very well the hp now is very much on the bandwagon um, are they going to be pressured to really act, in your opinion, as opposed to sort of fud the market? I, uh, I'm convinced. Yes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I believe. Times they, have changed. I, I, yeah. I believe that there is a significant pressure, and I, as I said, I, I really believe that the essential parts of the whole computing stack. So we have seen this with Linux. Uh, we see this with uh, cluster management systems. Uh, we see this with middleware solutions. Uh, the, the whole stack really is available through uh, open source solutions, which which is a, a great and a massive game changer, isn't it? Right? So and so Red Hat has this you know brilliant model. I mean, it's so counterintuitive. Give, <laughs> spend like crazy, um, invest like crazy, commit, give it away for free, and then support it. Mm. And then uh, in retrospect, wow, that's genius. But and other companies have tried. Uh, many have sold. Red Hat has bought some. VMware has bought some. IBM others. Mm. Why do you think we don't see more success with that type of model? Is it just too early right now? Is it, is it too hard? Uh, yeah, it's not an easy thing because you have, you you, you need to have trust uh, out there so that people really believe in your in, in your future that you will be around. I mean, for us as an enterprise, it's it's really important that a partner stays around, and we we value this. We we like the idea of supporting uh, uh, companies like Red Hat obviously financially also uh, through through taking their support services. And I believe that there are a lot of great success stories out there also. I mean, the Mongo guys, uh, for example, are doing great. Uh, a few other companies are doing great. I think the, the Docker IPO one day will be uh, uh, a healthy day for I the mean, guys Hortonworks who have Hortonworks has given a, you know, mm. a great bid for it. You know, their, their initial 
IPO or the income statement wasn't that, that pretty, but mm. starting to, to show some potential there, but still very early, all less than $100 million. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and there, for example, you, you were questioning about the database uh, yeah. environments. There, there are really a big number of players out there, uh, and, and every day new, new ones coming, CockroachDB or... Uh, yeah, or Cassandra, Aerospike, uh, open source you, now. I mean. You name them, and so here it's sometimes not evident to really see what consolidation and who will survive uh, right. in this game. So yeah, so it is very early. So it's it's, it's very early. We, we all adopt these type of technologies, but the, so the end game is not yet known. Yeah, yeah so you uh, talk a little bit about your data strategy. Are you, are you doing uh, Hadoop? For example, I mean, you're using a lot of the key mm, value store. Mm. You, you are doing we, Hadoop. Yeah, we. I mean, we historically we are more a transactional shop, so we have very, very high transactional volumes. Uh, but we we move more and more into in, into analytics, uh, in, uh, including real time uh, so streaming type of analytics to to better understand how how our system is used uh, to to be more sophisticated when it comes to fraud detection and quite a. a a lot of other initiatives ongoing. So we, we use obviously Hadoop. Huh? We, uh, the last time I checked, we Amadeus wa was hosting something like 30 petabytes of data, so <laughs> there's a lot of data around. So, yeah. and, and the quality in your title, is part of that quality data quality? Are you the de facto chief data officer or no? Not really, <laughs> no, no. I'm, I'm more... It's more software uh, quality. Yeah, I'm, I'm more there to furnish the base te technical capabilities. Uh, I'm, I'm not uh, overseeing the data scientists uh, or trying to, to harmonize the, the data uh, structures in the company itself. It's not what not about the not governance not piece of your title? Uh, it's it's uh, pertaining to R&D, so mm. we, parts of my activity is to give uh, the what we call historically called development support or software engineering services, so we provide a standard development environment. Uh, we ensure that gradually the the, uh, the applications go towards uh, containerization. We have uh, an internal technical policy, so we we have a catalog of what we call uh, non-functional requirements, like security requirements, scalability, uh, and recoverability requirements, and we, we try to to ensure that the, the the different various application teams adhere to common to common practice, which is a challenge in itself yeah. in, a, in a big distributed shop. <laughs> What's the most fun part of your, your job? What do you enjoy the most? Um, me personally, I'm, I'm, I'm really very much a new technology. I'm, I'm, I'm a distributed systems spe specialist, uh, so I quite enjoy what, what's happening currently with uh, Kubernetes. Um, and I'm looking a lot for the, the, the in-memory data management system, so that's where, where, uh, where I get possibly the most technical satisfaction out of it. Well, it's the renaissance of distributed systems now. For years, distributed systems have been so limited mm. and many just didn't work at, mm. at scale and, and web scale has changed that. Oh so, yeah. very exciting times. Didmer, thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. We have mm. to leave it there, but it's really a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. All right, keep Thank it right you. there, everybody. Stu and I will be back to wrap up day one at Red Hat Summit. This is theCUBE. We're live from Boston. We'll be right back.